Hey guys, it's Cole, and today I'm going to be talking about a really cool artist that worked in the genre of poetic document named Uta Barth, and sort of how her work has kind of progressed over her career. Barth was born in Berlin, Germany in 1958, and she moved to the U.S. as a teenager with her parents, going on to receive a B.A. from University of California, Davis in 82, and an M.F.A. from University of California, L.A. in 85. On the right here is a self-portrait of Uta from 1980, while she was still an undergrad, not totally set on what she wanted to do yet, and, you know, her medium of choice still kind of undetermined. Um, I should also note that she still lives in California today. Um, it's become her permanent residence, though. She's expressed that the art is incredible, the people are incredible, but the, the density and the city-like nature wasn't something she was super fond of. She's she finds herself having some wanderlust around Europe and hopes to get there someday and stay there. So why photography? How did she end up settling on this medium or decide that she wanted to pursue it? While in undergrad at UC Davis, she was taking photos as source material to document special configurations and lighting conditions so that she could take those images and then render them in other mediums like her painting class and drawing. Initially, she considered these photos, you know, dispensable, negligible even, but repeatedly found the photos more engaging and interesting than her efforts to recreate them in paint and, you know, graphite. So light would later become a hallmark of Barth's work, and so would space, movement, and perspective, all of which she started toying with from some of these earliest photos. And we will see this again in Ground from 1980, or 1992, rather, uh, and we'll get there in just a moment. But she approached photography with a perspective that I hadn't really seen in a photographer before. She was super disinterested in traditional photography. Instead, she wanted to take the incidental and ordinary things that go unnoticed, something to behold in her work. Think about the things that you might see out of the corner of your eye. That's the kind of stuff that Barth wanted her work to sort of be the focus of. So she pursued photography through a new lens, one that prioritized the use of the background to inform the subject of her images. She would intentionally blur the focus so her work would force the viewer to ascribe meaning through the background rather than the connotations of the central subject of the image itself. This is a quote pulled from a Boom magazine interview with Uta Barth from 2012 when she um, was given the MacArthur Fellowship Award. The question for me always is, how can I make you aware of your own activity of looking instead of losing your attention to the thoughts about what it is you are looking at? And I think, you know, this really encapsulates her perspective, and I think it even hints at, you know, how her work might be seen as more abstract as well as poetic document. And here's a quote to sort of expand on that same concept as well as a more recent photo of Barth from 2012. Um, people often refer to my work as out of focus, and I always counter that it is perfectly in focus. The camera just happens to be focused on an unoccupied point in space. So I'm photographing the volume of the room instead of its walls, the atmosphere of a rainstorm instead of the landscape the rain falls on. And in that same Boom magazine interview, she cited a few influences. These were the only ones I could really find. And she mentioned that she was concerned with duration and artwork. Think of Andy Warhol and his work from the 60s, as well as Robert Irwin, Ankawara, Robert Ryman, and John Cage. The latter she appreciated because he understood that in order to talk about silence, you had to bracket it with sound. She found herself super engaged with the minimalism of the 60s and 70s, and work from the light and space movement on the West Coast, if you're familiar with that. These artists informed her desire to make the art about looking as a concept and visual perception more generally. One of her earliest experiments in less than discernible imagery began in 1992 and 1993 with her first series, Ground, which she later expanded upon in 1984 to 1987. In this work, she began depicting periphery images, fleeting moments, by focusing on an empty foreground, which would put the background out of focus, but with intention. Here, in on the left, we have ground number two, and on the right, ground number 42, both of which I appreciate because not only are they perfectly exemplary of that out-of-focus intention that she had, I think they really drive you to see them less as what might be some kind of ocean landscape with 
grass and trees and you see them more as shapes and you know how does the image make you feel then in ground 42 we can see the color more too and two colored squares on the wall with a cropped border that sort of frames the image this is more work from ground that again that first series some of these reach into the second part of that series but i think they really expand and show her growth in this area of like poetic document near abstraction nothing in these images is discernible but the shapes the color they all have a tone and they're cropped in a way that frames the subject and forces you to take the information behind the foreground and use that to inform what's actually in front of you. This is more work from ground. Again, we see the same efforts to crop and focus in on something without, you know, sharp edges. This one on the right here, ground number 95.2, I found particularly interesting as, you know, whatever this is in actuality, it it's totally indiscernible and it functions in a totally different way now. That blurriness gives, you know, that that green sort of line at the bottom with these sprouting things, it gives it a different energy with these floating orbs as well. She went on to expand on these ideas and looking to explore scenes of everyday life in, in Im images that are notably more distorted and experimental. We have more objects in view in her field series from 1995 to 1998, but all of them are more distorted than what we see in ground. There's more going on, and there's even less focus. And we can see how light plays in these photos, especially in field number 23 here on the right side. The tone and the color of this image paired with you know, lack of focus, it makes it feel pillowy and light, but also warm. These are more photos from field, and I think uh, the, this is almost a turning point for Barth. She really, she invests so much into this lack of focus so that the viewer can give the image meaning. Rather than looking at, say, field number 20, you might look and say, that looks like a stoplight. But if you take a step back, even squint your eyes a little bit, the lack of focus gives it a different meaning. And past this point, we're jumping forward quite a few years, but in 2007 to 2008, she started focusing more on light in her Sundial series, where she was exploring the nature of viewing with a focus on sheens, glares, and shadows in daily life. So her work here is a little more in focus than previously, with sharper edges and things, but just as indiscernible because what's being photographed is the shadow and the light and not the subject itself. This, I think, is one of the most prominent photos from this series, uh, 07.9 from Sundial. This looks like some kind of reflection or shadow cast with even Barth's own arm potentially in the frame, but it doesn't read as that. You're so engaged with the shadows and the lines and, you know, whatever is here in front of you that it doesn't really read like, you know, a kitchen table or whatever it might actually be. She went on to play with light more in 2011 with to draw a bright white line with light. And she continued this playing with light in a new way by actually manipulating it herself. She actively adjusted a curtain in her living room as hours passed, and a thin beam of light turned into a dense band. And I think these photos are very engaging because they show how abstract and how far removed the subject is from you know the the meaning of the piece we can see up here in the left in untitled 11.2 Barth's own hand moving the curtain and you can see the small band of light grow as the hours pass and as she adjusts this curtain to to make it grow and this manipulation of light was something that I found really engaging really interesting and without knowing that this was a curtain I don't think I would have, you know, made that connection. It really, this beam of light and the effort to draw with something that you otherwise can't control is just executed so beautifully. And uh, she went on to do a lot more work 
but these were some of the things that I found really engaging, and I thought that transition from intentional sort of poetic document abstraction and perspective shifting to something that focuses more on light manipulation and documenting how light can be manipulated was uh, really interesting and something I hadn't quite seen yet. So I'm excited to take these photos, take this inspiration, and uh, bring it somewhere new for myself.